the anticipation of finally putting this foundation on my face. I've waited way too long, you guys. Today I'm going to finally be doing my wear test of the Patrick Ta Major Skin Cream Foundation and Finishing Powder Duo. I'm really excited about this mostly because I love Patrick Ta's line. And this product was the perfect amount of a little different than what we're used to seeing, but still not completely out there. And I find that Patrick Ta typically just does an amazing job with his products. So I've been really excited to see what he can do with complexion because he really hasn't stepped into base products. So if you are interested in picking this up, you can get it at Sephora. That's where I picked mine up. And also the Patrick Ta website. Going over the major details, it's $52. That is quite pricey. There are 24 different shades. And from the video that I watched and all of that, this is supposed to be a very customizable product in terms of it's really buildable. It's very blendable. You can put it in areas just where you need it, or you can build it up to get more of a full coverage appearance. It's supposed to be very skin-like. It really sounds like, in terms of cream foundation, something that I would really enjoy, which is why I've been so excited. The foundation portion of it it's supposed to give you a medium coverage and then of course there's also a pressed powder formula so let's take a look at it here is the box that it's gonna come in just pretty in line and in tune with the rest of Patrick Ta's line I got the shade light 3 we'll see I ordered this blindly online they didn't even have reviews out for it yet but here is the packaging I get fingerprints all over mine but it says Patrick Ta for face and here's the back. The product itself is made in the USA and has a 12-month shelf life. Quickly, let's talk about the amount of product that you get. And I'm going to compare the items to a couple of things just to give you a little bit of perspective here. Looks interesting, doesn't it? Almost look like a bronzer and highlight duo. So here is the foundation and here's the powder. And what I love about his cream products, this is the same packaging, just a little bit bigger with his blush duos with one cream and one powder. This is going to protect the powder from getting all up in the cream. So I'm very happy about that. Okay, so the cream foundation is going to contain 12 grams of product. Keep it in mind, 12 grams. Another cream foundation that I love is the Good Apple Foundation from KVD. This contains 10 grams of product. So in all reality, this contains just a little less, two grams less than the KVD. The Wayne Goss Foundation contains 28.3 grams of product, which is just under twice the amount of product. So keep that in mind. I don't think the amount of product that you get in the Patrick Top is terrible, but it's not great. But considering it's a duo, I'm not mad about it. But if you're looking for more products, something like the Wayne Goss is going to give you a lot more. But we loved the KVD so much. And keep in mind, it's not that much less product and you get a powder. Now in terms of the powder, the weight of it is nine grams of product. When we get into the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder, which we all know and love, this has eight grams of product. So eight grams versus nine grams, it's not far off. Now I will say the Charlotte Tilbury does have less product than a lot of other powders that I have, but if I can put up with Charlotte Tilbury, Patrick Ta to me is also kind of a luxury brand. $52, I think it really, really hurts. I don't think the amount of product that you get is great, but if you think of it in terms of a powder and a foundation together, because they are in one compact, that is not a bad product price. Let's see. I'm going to get in a little closer. Let's just go ahead and apply and learn about this product and see what we can do. This is a first impression, so as always, you should tune into my speed reviews that I do periodically after I've used the products for a longer amount of time. I give my final thoughts. They're my favorite videos to film, so make sure you subscribe to be able to get that update. So let's take a look at the consistency over here of the product. Are we ready? So this is light three. I think it's going to be pretty good. Ooh, it feels very, very soft. I don't know why I was expecting it to be kind of hard. I think that'll be a decent color. Okay, let's swatch it. Let's see. Quite emollient. Okay, 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 okay. Nice. Let's see the powder, which is very, very light. I don't know about it being this light. I honestly wish the powder had a little bit more pigmentation. 
Okay, let's just see on the face. I'm not sure yet. For skin prep, I put on my Chantecaille moisturizer about 10, 20 minutes ago. Also just put on my Tula Mineral Magic sunscreen, one of my all-time favorite sunscreens that's been settling in. I'm gonna put a little bit of the Makeup Forever Hydro Booster Primer on my skin. Just to be fair, I would do this on a normal day. My skin, I woke up today, I haven't been drinking enough water because it was a little dry. So I want to kind of make sure my skin is nice and and hydrated. Okay, so I'm gonna give this a couple minutes to sink into the skin and we will get going. So as far as my skin type goes, I have more normal to dry skin. Normally right now this time of year it leans more on the normal side, but I actually am quite sweaty. So I live in a very humid climate. So when I go out, I sweat. So foundations still need to be able to hold up, but still not make my skin look dry. Right now, like I said, I did wake up. My skin felt a little drier than normal. So keep that in mind. Let's go ahead and get into application now, you guys. I don't know if I wanna stick my brush in quite yet, do I want? We're just gonna have to do it. That's how people are gonna do it, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and start off with using a brush on this side of my face. If you watch Patrick Ta's demo, he uses his brush that he curated for this product. I'm not gonna buy the brush. I have a good enough brush collection, so we're gonna see how it works with my Refer 31 brush. Refer is having buy one, get one right now as well. This is a very good foundation brush, so I'm gonna just... I don't want to go too heavy because this foundation is softer than it appears. Okay, see, I do have some acne and hormonal stuff happening here, I guess. I don't know. Don't they say like hormonal acne happens on the bottom of your chin? Anyways, okay, this is spreading nice. I am using pretty light of a layer though, I will say that. And if you're a color match with me, light three looks pretty darn good. Maybe a tad light, but not really. So I've dipped in three times, but I'm not pressing hard. So I haven't gotten a ton of product yet. Okay, let's get the forehead. I do like it with the brush application. I don't know if it would be better for me to use like a spatula and blend it out that way. Cause I feel like I'm really making this look ugly, <laughs> but it blended out very easy and seamless just as Patrick Ta said it would. And in his demo, he actually did run over with a sponge just to kind of smooth it into the skin, push it in. What do we think? I feel like this side looks good. It's not the most smoothing or hydrating looking on my skin, but it looks good. It certainly looks very perfected. I would say I have a pretty thin layer on. It looks quite natural. Let's try it with the sponge though. So I'm gonna go ahead, get the butt end of my sponge. And I didn't press too terribly hard. And let's see how it does over the acne. Ooh, that covered pretty good. Okay, yeah, I mean, they say it gives a medium coverage and I'm sure it gives that if you apply a little bit of product, but I feel like with cream foundations, when you use a sponge, it really goes in, especially with that first bounce. Make sure you get that first bounce if you're using a sponge or a brush and make sure you get that on the acne or the redness, wherever you have something that you really want to cover. Make sure that's the first bounce. So I did dip in a few times into the product, but honestly, I did not press that hard. I was mindful not to use too much product, but I feel like this gives a nice amount of coverage without looking too heavy. And I had that big screaming red spot right here. And I feel like it looks good. I prefer to apply this with a sponge though. It applied beautifully with a brush, but there's just something about the way the sponge gives it an airbrushed spread and finish. So if you're gonna use this, I'm definitely a sponge girl for this one. So take a closer look. It's definitely not smoothing over the texture and pores, as you can see, but it doesn't look bad, and it has a really pretty natural glow, you guys. Let's see, I have some dryness right here. You can see it somewhat emphasizing that and looking a little thirsty right here. We're gonna have to see how the powder aids that because I'm a firm believer in powder can make or break a look no matter how the foundation is. I think it looks good. It's not perfect, but it definitely looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and put on some more makeup in the process before we get to the powder. I just popped on a little bit of the new Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Concealer. And as the makeup is sitting, I just wanted to let you know kind of where I'm thinking. If you have textured skin, anything like that. I don't think this is gonna do too many favors 
overall, I tend to really enjoy a cream foundation and this has those cream foundation aspects that I really enjoy. But you can see, I mean, she not smooth in anything. So let's take a look at the powder to see what the powder can do. I'm gonna go ahead and use a brush first. This is a refer number 19 brush. And I'm gonna look up. I'm gonna set my concealer, though obviously the concealer has nothing to do with the foundation, but it feels very, very lightweight. It's not adding any coverage. Typically, I like the feeling of a creamier powder. Let's see. Mm, I feel like the powder just made it look worse. I don't know if you're able to tell, but now my face looks hairy right here, and it doesn't look great right here. I'm gonna test with a damp sponge. I like to apply powders like this. But let's see if that makes a difference. Definitely not like the most superb blurring powder I've ever used, but I think it looks better applied like this. And now can you see it looks really textured on my nose where I have like blackheads and whiteheads and whatnot. I really want to like this. I'm trying very hard to like this, but I feel like my chin looks very textured and that's being emphasized. This area is not looking so hot right now. It's not the worst product I've ever used, but maybe it needs to settle in. Some foundations do better with wear. I find that foundations that look drier tend to look really good and wear very well. So we're not knocking it yet, but it's not knocking my socks off on that initial application. I feel like my under eyes are looking a little dry. Now this is a newer concealer and I'm not super in love with this concealer, but the concealer typically looks better than this. So let me go ahead and finish the rest of my makeup, see if this will settle down a little bit more, and we'll begin the wear test. Makeup is on, things are settled. I like this foundation up to the point of my lower chin where I have some white heads right here. I have this guy right here and it's just not going over to these flattering. Now, when it comes to complexion products, you can't expect them to get rid of texture. Texture's just not gonna go away. But you know, I do find some products just roll over that texture better than others. And this is one that's not doing well. So immediately, if this is a concern of yours, if you have acne on your complexion, I can immediately say this is not the most flattering for that skin type. If you have dry skin, you are going to have to exfoliate, prep your skin well for this to look good. Honestly, it sounds more negative than it feels <laughs> because I'm like taking a step back. I still think the makeup looks just fine. But you know, when it comes to foundation reviews, I have to be very critical. I have to show you everything that I'm feeling. I think the foundation itself, I like more than the powder. The powder to me just didn't do the best that it could do. I have other powders that I would put over this foundation that I think would kind of really help what I don't like about the foundation. Yeah, and it doesn't look as thin or as skin-like on the skin that I had wanted, and I feel like I didn't over apply. So we're gonna see how this wears. A lot of times, like I said, with products like this, once I go out, once my skin starts to combine the oils and the foundation this could turn out very very good but we're gonna have to see so I will check in in a few hours so it's been about five almost six hours since I've had the foundation on I did do a little bit of wear and tear on it because I went on a walk and I got pretty sweaty and I have to say this foundation is not great in the summer weather so if you're doing outdoorsy things we're not doing good. Uh, this foundation is not flexible, which I'm so surprised by because cream foundations typically are so flexible and they move with the face so well. Um, it never really fully dried down, but that's very typical with cream foundations. I'm not surprised by that. What I am surprised with, so I don't even have really wrinkles here that are that bad or anything. I have never had an issue with any foundations settling in this area just from when I scrunch my face, but that's happening here. It's a 
first foundation to ever do it. It's settling and it's looking not good right here. And my mouth is all messed up. Smile lines aren't looking great. That's not the biggest deal, but it looks separated and gross around the dry zits. Or I went like this, it picked up. It looks kind of gross above the lip. When I take a step back, it looks okay, but this is a red flag for me. The first place that a foundation is going to break up is going to be around the mouth. And it's not been that long, and it's not looking good. Like, I didn't think the foundation was bad when I was putting it on. I had some things that I was noticing that I felt like wear could wear it down and make it look a little better. But we're separating really badly and settling into lines really, really badly. I think wear could be improved if I used a different powder. I don't like the powder. I feel like the powder dries up the face even more. It's not thick of enough of a powder to really hold the product in but i will be back in a few more hours and tell you my final thoughts though i don't exactly seeing it going up from here it's not a terrible foundation and i thought it looked decent but there are a lot better foundations that have come out this year but anyways I'll see you in a few. All right, it's been about eight hours since I put the foundation on. I just got back from the pool. So I once again had a pretty good test today. Honestly, it does not look too different from the previous check in a few hours ago, which is a good sign because normally between hours five to eight is when things for most foundations tend to really show. But overall, I mean, I really wouldn't say I'm in love with this foundation. I mean, taking a closer look, it really did just end up getting separated and cakey looking on the lower half of my face. That's the area of the face that normally doesn't look good if something's not going to look good, but it really doesn't look good it looks very textured just not how i want to show up at the end of the day you know <laughs> it did pretty well on my cheek areas but overall the foundation itself it doesn't blend one within the skin which is something that i typically do look for for foundations i do enjoy the concept of this i do like a cream foundation i like having the foundation powder duo the idea of it is there but for me the execution is just not personally what i prefer in terms of cream foundation my favorite cream foundation right now is the wayne goss cream foundation to me i like the wayne goss better still and this powder is really lightweight which i think a lot of you will like but on my dry skin i just felt like the powder dried out my skin even more. For me, I want a more thick, creamy kind of powder to set my makeup and really hold the foundation down. I'm gonna continue to test this foundation. I'm gonna try the foundation with one of the powders that I prefer and vice versa. I'm gonna try it with like the Wayne Goss foundation and the powder in here to really see if it's the powder that I don't like, see how the foundation performs with the powder that I am more familiar with. But as of now, first impressions, it's not what I would call a bad foundation. I've definitely dealt with worse foundations recently, but it's it doesn't do me too many favors. It really does not. I have other foundations that have come out recently that I would definitely recommend over this one. The most recent one, the Hourglass Ambient Foundation, one of my absolute favorites that came out this year, as well as the Wayne Goss that I mentioned earlier, so I would look into those. Those ones are super top tier. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Let's help one another out i want you to share down below your skin type if you've tried the foundation and how the foundation worked for you did you have a different experience than me did you try different techniques than i did this is only the beginning this is just a first impressions i will certainly be updating you down the road in just a couple of weeks so keep an eye out for that and yeah make sure you like this video and are subscribed to my channel and i will catch you in the next one bye guys have a good one